Envoys from the economic community of West African states are expected to arrive in Burkina Faso on Tuesday, following the country's second military coup in less than nine months. The new leader, Ibrahim Traor, has accepted the resignation of the country's now ex-president, Paul Henri Sandaogo Damiba, was toppled by junior army, army officers on Friday, and he's now fled to neighboring Togo. The coup has sparked concern among world powers as the region battles a growing Islamist insurgency. Captain Ibrahim Traore is Burkina Faso's new self-declared leader. He has promised to tackle insecurity and appealed for unity to fix the country's problems. We need to speed things up. The entire country faces an emergency. So each one at their own level must go faster and abandon all cumbersome and unnecessary red tape. Hundreds of people have marched through the streets of the capital to celebrate the coup. No one will threaten the existence of this country. We have to fight for our country. Fight, army, we support you. We came out to support Captain Traore for real change. We are out to show our support so he can implement what he said in his statement. The military has been fighting a violent jihadist insurgency for the last seven years. The state has lost control of more than a third of the country. Thousands have been killed and nearly two million people have been displaced due to the conflict. Many are suffering from severe food insecurity. Burkina Faso's new leader faces a series of extremely tough challenges to tackle the humanitarian crisis and quell the Islamist insurgency. Henry Wilkins is a journalist in Ouagadougou. He told us about the atmosphere in the capital and how it's changed since the coup. Yeah, so the, the scenes on the streets here today have been a lot calmer than they were over the over the weekend. Um, you know, over the weekend there were there were soldiers on the street, there were protesters on the street. Although there have been sporadic protests uh, today and celebrations for the uh, for the new junta, it's relatively small numbers of people that have that have come out onto the streets. But certainly things are a lot calmer than they were over the weekend. Now we have seen, as we saw in that report, there does appear to be support for the new leader. What explains that? Well, I think the, the insecurity is really what explains that. I mean, I've, I've spoken to probably 10, 12 Burkinabis today um, who just all of them are in support of the of the new junta. I think there's kind of a sense of, of desperation here. Um, you know, they had the democratic government for around five years. They had the last military junta for only eight months. But neither of those governments have proved to be effective in uh, sorting out the security problems that the that the country is facing because of its its seven year conflict with militants linked to Islamic states and Al Qaeda. I think uh, you know there's a sense of, well, where do we turn now? Mm. And now stepping into this chaotic scene are envoys from the West African bloc, ECOWAS. They say they're going to be going to Burkina Faso. What is their message going to be? Yeah, I mean, with the with the previous junta, they uh, ECOWAS managed to get them to commit to a two-year transition period, where in theory they would sort out the security in that time, and then transition back to to a democratic uh, society. I dare say that that's probably what they're going to try and do with this new junta as well. Um, whether they'll be successful is another question. Uh, this junta, as I think you said earlier, has uh, talked about cutting the red tape and it seems like they want sort of hard and fast solutions, how much they're going to be willing to listen to the regional community and the wider international community is uh, yet to be seen. Henry Wilkins, journalist there in Wugadugu, thanks very much for the latest.